Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I am Vineet and yes, as rightly pointed out by some of the subscribers, today's video is about MX Linux, which is an interesting distribution and has become a real talk of the town recently. It has gained a lot of popularity in its short history of 4 years. So I've decided to review MX and see if the distribution has any real potential to take on the big names in the world of Linux. So let's begin today's video. Alright, so let's begin by quickly looking into the history of the distribution first. MX is a collaboration between two Linux distribution, Antix and Memphis, combining features of both distribution into one. Memphis OS started in 2003 to provide an easy alternative to the complex SUSE Linux and Red Hat Linux. It was initially based on Debian, later moved to Ubuntu, and from version 7.0 onwards, it shipped with Memphis' own custom-made binaries. However, the distribution was discontinued in 2013. And Antix is a Linux distribution which is still in active development. It was initially based on Memphis OS but later shifted to Debian Stable. It is developed as a lightweight distribution made for old computers with legacy hardware. MX Linux started in 2014. Its first version was called MX14. It is based on Debian Stable and uses core components of Antix distribution. It also has additional softwares developed by MX community and that is what makes this distribution so special. So in short, MX is a Debian based distribution with the goods of Antix and Memphis OS. Now let's move on to the distribution itself starting with the installation process. The installation process of MX is pretty simple but little different from the other popular Linux installers. The first option that you get is to select the disk where you want to install the OS and there's an option to run the partition tool here and if you're not geeky enough to partition a disk you can use the third option which lets you specify the amount of free space on the disk that you require and it will take care of the rest and partition your disk accordingly. Now this option is great for newbies. The other interesting option is the choice to install grub which is the default bootloader of MX onto MBR of disk or root folder. So this helps if you decide to have a dual boot configuration with windows which is what majority of Linux users prefer. And the last window gives you service setting for advanced user. Here you can choose which service you want to install during the installation of the OS. And also the entire installation process is super quick. It takes roughly around 7 to 8 minutes for the complete OS to get installed. Now let's talk about the desktop. Now this is an XFCE 4.12 desktop customized for the users of MX. Being an XFCE desktop, you can expect it to be very light on hardware resources. On a casual look, uh, this gives a feeling of a Windows desktop but it's a lot more powerful. And also the theming of the desktop resembles to that of Solus Budgie desktop. But this desktop is super customizable. Rarely I have seen any desktop with so many options for customization. And also the so called options are well presented and are extremely easy to use. Now let's quickly run through the system setting app and take a look at some of the customization MX offers. Now the appearance tab lets you quickly change the color set of window. You can easily change the icon set from icons tab and font tab lets you change the system font. And there are a few more options under setting. Desktop can be used to change wallpapers. You can also change options in the right click menu and change few desktop icon setting. File Manager is used to customize Thuner File Manager. You can change side panel setting and I also set single click or double click to activate. Next is MX Tools that we'll check out in a bit. Using panel setting you can edit the current panel like moving the panel to any side of the screen, increase or decrease the size of panel. Appearance tab lets you choose the panel background and set opacity of panel. You can also add or remove items from panel. Many other options here are pretty self-explanatory and I'm not going to go through them. But Grub Customizer lets you customize the bootloader so you can edit the entries in the bootloader or change the background image and coloring scheme of bootloader. And also Light DM Greeter setting lets you edit the display manager window. That's the screen which prompts you for password for logging into the computer. So you can see that MX offers Tons of options for customization. Now apart from all these settings, MX Linux also has MX Tools which is a set of important tools that lets you do important system tasks quickly and easily. 
So Live USB Maker lets you create a bootable USB drive. Snapshot lets you take a backup of your current system or a folder. Boot Repair lets you repair the bootloader in case it gets corrupted for some reason. So you can live boot into a computer using a bootable MX Linux disk and run this tool to repair the bootloader. Menu Editor lets you customize the names, icons, menu of application in your system so you can customize the applications easily. User Manager is also a very useful tool. I have recently made a detailed video on Linux user and group management. First of all, if you have not seen that video, I highly recommend you watch that video so that you understand the basics of Linux user and group management. You can watch the video by clicking on the top right corner of the screen. I'll also post the link of the video in the description below. But this tool lets you do all that I have discussed in that video in a graphical interface. So you can add a new user account, change password of a user account or delete an account right from here. And you can also add or remove group and change group of each user via this application. Now this makes the entire process of Linux user and group management a child's play. Ponky Manager, a very popular system monitor in Linux also comes pre-installed in MX which is super convenient if you are a big fan of Konki. It is also loaded with tons of Konki widgets to suit the needs of most users. The Tweak app gives you few more customization options. Some of them we have already discussed. Themes lets you change the system theme. Compositor allows you to set transparency and shadow options. You can change the transparency of Windows top bar. There are several other customization options available here as well. Now let's talk about the applications. MX has a great list of pre-installed applications. You get Firefox latest quantum browser pre-installed. Other popular applications like VLC Media Player, LibreOffice Suite uh, is also available. Konki Manager is also available by default. Now for installing new applications, uh, MX uses apt package manager. However, there are two GUI package manager available, Synaptic and MX package installer and I highly recommend you try MX package installer which I find super convenient. It first gives you a list of popular packages available in its repository in a category view. Otherwise you can also check full app catalog. You get a pop-up first where you can choose which repo to load. So in this way you can download packages from any of the three repository it supports. Repo Package Manager also lets you choose the repo mirror based on your region. Now Flatpak which is the new application distribution system is supported but the app is not installed by default so you need to first download that from the repository. Snap is not supported yet but they have a workaround on their website to install Snap packages so if you want you can try that. Next is the system performance which is really smooth in case of MX and you expect the same from a Linux distribution that uses Antix core components and has a XFCE desktop. Um, on idle, so CPU usage goes even to 0% and memory consumption was around 470 MB with Konki running. However, the recommended system requirement is i686 processor, 2 GB of RAM and 10 GB of hard disk. Alright, so that was all. Uh, when I initially decided to review MX, I was not expecting much. But after reviewing the distribution, I can say that MX team has done a really great job and built a very powerful distribution which has all the potential to be at the top but it all gets down to how long they can survive which is really important. I mean in Linux I have seen great projects that have huge potential but they die very quickly. MX has the potential but they have been around for only 4 years. So if they keep doing what they have done for like 10-12 years, they definitely have great future. And I really hope they do. Alright, so that was all for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. And if you have any comment, suggestion or feedback, please type that in, in the comment box. And a huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPX Tech channel for supporting me and liking the videos. It really means a lot to me. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.